Next speaker is uh, <clears throat> Feroz Mustafa, representing India. Feroz, please. Hi. Thanks, Samad. And uh, hi, I'm Feroz. Uh, I am from the National Center for Biological Sciences in India. Uh, let me just. Uh, so, in India, apart from the uh, centers of uh, the Indian Bioimaging Consortium, we also have other institutes which offer uh, the microscopy facility services to other uh, uh, users. These are some of the users. Uh, so these are some of the facilities. Uh, so, I represent three of these, which are uh, NCBS, INSTEM, and CCAM. Uh, it's a uh, cluster uh, under an MOU and uh, resources in the three institutes are shared uh, and then also uh, allowed to be used by the users outside through the consortium. So, uh, so we we are at the central imaging and flow cytometry facility. So basically, the microscopy and the flow cytometry is combined in our facility. Uh, and it's shared between the National Center for Biological Sciences, Institute for Stem Cell Research and Regenerative Medicine, and the Center for Cellular Molecular Platforms. Uh, all three institutes are located in the same campus and the resources are shared. So uh, we are an operator-free facility and we de uh, develop and run training programs. Uh, we, have the, we run the Bangalore Microscopy course, which is an international training program as well as internal training and national level training programs uh, for different users. And our facility is, uh, uh, is an operator free facility and for both internal and external users. So the users come in and uh, are able to access the microscope straight. We also collaborate with uh, internal researchers to develop new optical systems. So we have three kinds of uh, microscopes in our facility, basically the wide field fluorescence microscopes for live imaging, confocal microscopes, super resolution, as well as user customized microscopes. So in this, uh, we'll be covering only the uh, first three, the user customized microscopes, we do not uh, what is control the data at all. Uh, the microscopes as well as the computers which control them are completely uh, do completely belong to the users and we do not do any data management. So there is at the moment no centralized data management policy in India. Uh, each research institute has their own uh, policies and from what I have reached out to and gathered the data for almost all of the institutes listed earlier follow similar policies to ours. So I will just go through what our policy has been, uh, which is that after the users acquire the data, we allow the data to be on the microscope computer for up to 48 hours in the case of most of these systems, uh, except for the specialized imaging systems, in which case they need to do the analysis also in the same computers. So we allow that for a little longer duration. After the 48 hours, the data is automatically shifted to our facility server for another 168 hours. Uh, and the users in this period are required to copy the data to either their internal lab servers or to uh, their lab partition in our facility servers, which is a dedicated 4 TB for each lab. Uh, for external users, the data is shifted to the CCAMP data server where it is stored for up to a year and the users can come back and access it. So the usually all these uh, tra data transfers are through our intranet at, uh, with a 1GB connection. Uh, but uh, in cases the users want to, they are also allowed to use uh, um, DVD drives to write the data out from those individual machines. We do not allow uh, USB access 
to any of our computers uh, because of uh, virus issues. Uh, but they are, can use USBs either on their uh, lab data server or copy it to their computer and use a USB uh, system. So uh, there really was not much to say. We are trying to develop a, a central data management for uh, India, but at the moment there is no central man data management uh, policy in the country. Uh, or even across the institutes. Right now, we are trying to implement one for our institute and then uh, expand it further. Uh, data is usually transferred through physical media or internet, and uh, the individual labs are responsible for the data management. We, at the moment, do not provide image analysis support, but we run image, anal image analysis training programs periodically for uh, users, both internal as well as external. Uh, on a national basis. Uh, and we are trying to set up a image analysis facility, a national facility for image analysis, as at the moment, uh, central data management facility, uh, the granting agencies are not very conducive to funding such a thing. Well, there has been renewed interest in image analysis over the last year. So we are trying to piggyback on it to set up a, a data management facility. Uh, that's about it there. So if you have any questions, please. Thank you very much, Feroz. Okay, any questions? Uh, yes, I, I have a question for Feroz, is that okay? Uh, Chris, please. Yeah, Chris, Chris in Mexico. Yeah. Feroz, so, I mean, da uh, data servers, server farms, you think, they're, they're, they're pretty expensive. Uh, to maintain and to, to expand and use. So I see, I see that as a strategy being employed. What is the real push for internal server farms as opposed to making use of, um, say, uh, Amazon Web or Google Cloud or these sort of external third-party servers? Is it compliance? Is there some kind of legal push there? Or is it uh, speed of transfer, getting into an intranet is faster than, than getting it onto Amazon Web? What would be the critical issues that make but paying for your own server better than using third party servers? For us, the, one of the main pushes have been the funding. It's easier to get funding for setting up our own server as opposed to uh, getting it for accessing AW, uh, Amazon Web Services over uh, X number of years or X number of months. Uh, also, the other issue is uh, we quite often uh, suffer from uh, internet, uh, what do you say, uh, inter internet breakage. Uh, so in those cases, we will be dead in the water if we don't have it in-house. Uh, apart from this, there is also the question of uh, confidentiality. Uh, and the users are happier uh, with the data in-house than uh, on any of the web platforms. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, yes, actually, um, so this is Antje. I have one general question um, to Feroz, but also for all the other speakers uh, from today. Um, if you had one wish for free with global bioimaging, after also listening to your colleagues' talks today, what would that be? How can global bioimaging help um, to support imaging facilities and the imaging communities with the topic of pre-publication image data and all the challenges related to this? Uh, my answer to that would be what we would need would be a, what we would like to have is a uniform, uh, what do you say, policies across, uh, across the world. Uh, and at the moment, it's a little difficult to push for a change in India. But if it if things were generalized and uniformly implemented, it might be possible to do that. Uh, as well as if there is centralized servo forms which are possible to set up. I don't know how difficult it is going to be, uh, especially with uh, the lack of trust seen between countries at the moment. Uh, but something like that would be good. 
Yeah. That's Thanks, Boris. Fantastic.